It's how hot. So it could be how the length of movement and how long the body. As it considers the issues around the principle of maternal mortality and mobility, Ali tried a cosmologist. To this end, this afternoon, I would like to follow you with the signal, which stands from the same point you just did. Uh, which is a discriminatory enforcement of criminal abortion laws. I will detail how enforcement and stigma negative impacts the lives of girls, women, their families, and their communities. Abortion is one of the only legal procedures regulated through penal laws, criminal laws, and policies. This means that women violate like restrictive laws and even an abortion can face criminal sanctions ranging from fines, community service, and in some cases, law abuse sentences. The extreme was how women who simply want to exercise their productive life. Women who, in most cases, have never had a criminal record. From 2011 to 2012, I was conducted a competitive and quantitative research where we investigated the enforcement of laws in the lives of Russia. The lives of Russia in Argentina, Bolivia, Brazil, Malawi, and Rwanda. Copies of this research report are available here. The study examined the period between 2006 and 2014, looking at the instance of abortion, uh, the rest, imprisonment, and alternative penalties in each of the five countries. This included in depth interviews with women and their relatives, lawyers, judges, and uh, prison administrators. The study findings revealed the distribution of prospect of abortion laws and the regulatory treatment women and girls receive when they choose for not choosing one at all. Those criminalizing abortion are, fair, are, are a fairly recent phenomenon dating to the return of the last century. It's instructive to look at their development in order to understand how they how they need to control the criminalization of women who get abortions. Modern debates on abortion uh, mainly took place in the aftermath of the World War One. Well, there were widespread groups of women. This led to an international movement in support of compassionate abortions. This explains why in places where abortions are criminalized, there are often exceptions for rape and for the life of a pregnant mother. So, within the dance of stigmatized issues, there are degrees of stigmatization. What this kind of legislation makes clear is that uh, it is not the abortion procedure in and of itself that is problematic, but rather it is the character of the woman that determines if the abortion should be legal. By setting very legal parameters for abortion, the state was in this sense determining which woman is most deserving of an abortion. Today's discriminatory application of abortion laws will stress that indeed an informal hierarchical scale of who does and who, does, who doesn't deserve an abortion is still in place. Moreover, those prohibiting abortion are in forces uniformly. When the lives of women and girls, those who are poor, are for this sake in partners and could lead to education for access to community court affairs are most likely to face the prosecution for breaking abortion laws. Women with means and education can prevent abortion condition and help by traveling abroad or paying for providers and colleagues. This afternoon, I want to talk about Rwanda. In order to showcase how abortion laws are discriminatory and enforced, and the consequences of this that this has for women, girls, and their families, abortion is criminalized in Rwanda. This passage of a new law in 2012 legalized abortion in cases of rape, incest, post marriage, and health complications of the mother and the fetus. However, the law also includes, but in some legal requirements, women seeking abortion must obtain authorization from a court and a signature from two doctors. In a country where the ratio of doctors to population is 0 0.6 to 10,000, and the court system is very difficult to access, especially for poor, for poor people, it's very difficult for, in fact, all women to have access to abortion. According to the several judges interview in this study, data, uh, then all their colleagues have received a single request for abortion committed under the new law. Women continue to be arrested and imprisoned for abortion in Rwanda, even those whose situation could be exempted from criminal liability, as described by the new law. Findings from the study show that the instance for women pregnancy in Rwanda is, uh, is that uh, more than half of the pregnancies in the country are in unintended. Approximately 22% of these pregnancies end with produced abortions. 
which accounts for 60,000 abortions every year. Of this, 24,000 completed every year require emergency medical treatment. Abortion cases are heavy burden of young women as the health care system in general. Virtually all abortions occur outside the health system where safety cannot be assured. As in many countries, poor young women in urban and rural areas are far more likely to experience complications than not young women. After an interview of a very limited from five prisons from 2013 to 2014, outside found that there were 313 women incarcerated in prisons in Rwanda. Approximately 20% of these incarcerated, 25% uh, uh, of all women incarcerated in Rwanda are due to abortion. But most did not have the representation as a result of the study, and the vast majority had little or no education. Young women, particularly, are vulnerable to violations. 90% of all the women in prison for abortion are 25 years and below. And over 50% of these uh, who are interviewed are mostly orphans, especially after the 19th for genocide. Here in an interview, one of the girls in Rwanda who says, My name is Clarice, I'm 21 years old now. I go in prison at the age of 18 for committing abortion. I have served four years now. I'm the first born in the family of six. I stopped my education and I tried to into sickness. I used to stay with my, both my parents when I got pregnant. I was uh, my 42 year old local that was a friend of my father. I got sick and after I got the hospital, I was ready to have a lot of police and then to prison. My father asked me to keep it a secret because we had to protect uh, the local leader. Sometimes I feel like I did more than an abortion to serve this punishment. Uh, as we have outlined, women who are prosecuted for legal abortion face bias and neglect in the criminal justice system. The first point of the law is selective and discriminatory, with the highest burden and the risk of prosecution falling on the general equality and young people. These marginalized women are stripped of their rights due to the process, of, due process and judicial guarantees and protection. They face arbitrarily preventative arrests, high fines, stigma, and public condemnation, simply because they need the best health service. The treatment is a uh, basis of medical and public health and human rights concerns. Primitive abortion laws take away women's reproductive autonomy and force them to seek illegal and safe abortions. They indeed violate human rights, including uh, the right to equality and non discrimination, as my friend Rebecca highlighted. The CEDAW Committee has taken discrimination in the criminalization of healthcare services and all the women in Second, with the right to privacy and confidentiality. Confidentiality is a key aspect of the right to privacy according to medical ethics and human rights standards of reproductive health. And then also the right to freedom from uh, torture and uh, inhuman and degrading treatment. Uh, in the light of this meeting and light of this session, I would like to recommend the following. At a minimum, governments should take immediate action to ensure that any woman investigated or criminally charged for abortion to receive full procedural protections in accordance with the right to judicial due process. Governments should ensure that adequate effective procedures are in place to give all women that of the productive age access to abortion when we need to provide the law and to cause abortion care without discrimination. Lastly, in order to uh, fully protect and uphold women's rights, government must remove all criminal penalties on abortion and eliminate all barriers to access to safe and legal abortions. Therefore, in conclusion, abortion stigma is a negative attribute ascribed to women who seek to terminate pregnancy that marks them internally or externally as inferior to ideals of women. These ideals are based on traditional gender stereotypes that allow for female sexuality only for procreation. Identity women are solely mothers that accept naturally as self sacrificing behavior, and yet the other things with the world's current abortion laws, women and girls have to women and girls have to be seen beyond these gender stereotypes. The universal declaration of human rights provide for all human beings as equals, and the United Nations uh, Nations Human Rights Council has a central role to therefore ensure that every every person's right is protected and realized. Thank you.